Okay, hey guys, um, this is cycle two, week seven. And again, this six weeks, I am using the um, supplies that I ordered from Lighthouse Educational. So I'm gonna walk you through what the experiment is and the supplies that they have given us. And then um, I'm also gonna walk you through just kind of a little explanation about it that you can either just use for your own edification or um, if you think your kiddos in your class can enjoy part of it, then you um, obviously are welcome to use that too. So week seven is sun prints. And what they have sent us is a package of um, print, sun print paper that looks like this. So it comes already in a, like a black plastic envelope so that um, it, sorry, so that um, the paper doesn't get exposed too early. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a sheet of that sun print paper and I have enough for each one of you guys to take home. Um, the instructions are on the back. So I'm gonna make a copy of this and make sure that you get it um, so that you can practice it at home if you would like. Um, and then also so that you have it for class. Um, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one sheet of that um, sun print paper and then you're gonna take just, I just took straight pins from my little sewing kit here. And I've got plenty of cardboard already cut um, for each one of you as the tutors and then um, also for each one of your kiddos. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna pin, mine has already been done, but yours will be just plain blue and you're gonna pin the edges of it to the cardboard. Um, I'm just gonna put two pins in here, but when I did this at home, I did four pins, one in each corner. And part of the reason you do this is so that your, if you have a bit of a windy day, your sun print paper doesn't blow away while you're trying to get it um, to go or that the edges don't kind of curl up. Um, but also it gives a little bit more sturdiness. So once you've got your objects on there, you can carry it outside into the sun and it doesn't, um, doesn't get exposed too early. So um, put pin the solid blue paper onto your cardboard. And then you're gonna take just some regular items. I will show you, I used a button. Um, it looks like this, it's flat. Um, I used a key, see my key. I used a paper clip. Um, and then I wanted to show you why flat objects are best. This is my leaf that I used. And you can see if you turn it sideways, it's kind of bowed a little bit. It's kind of curved in on the edges. Um, it might actually have done better if I had pinned it flat on the back so that the rounded part of it was more pressed out to the paper. You can actually see um, the holes where I pinned it uh, onto the blue paper. But, um, and again, you can see on the scissors how um, it's kind of faded. You're not getting a real defined line here. That's because my scissors are more 3D, they, they've got more dimension to them. And so there's places where under the scissors, light still gets in. So they don't lay flat up against the paper. And so you don't get a real defined line around the edges of that one. Um, so as you are thinking about either items to bring for this particular experiment or items to have your kids bring, flat, really defined objects are best. Um, some great ideas are uh, string. You can use like yarn or um, even like putty um, or Play-Doh and they could, you know, make something out of Play-Doh. Obviously the flatter, the better. If it's too thick, then the edges will be kind of faded. Um, you can use string to, you know, spell out the letter, first letter of someone's name. Um, I've also seen really great results with like those die cut um, shapes. So you know, if you have a die cut machine or if you just have a bunch of shapes that are printed out, you can get you can get these like at Mardell or somewhere for like bulletin boards. Um, so that's a good option if you don't want to ask your parents to bring something in ahead of time. Or you can just go on a little mini nature walk and take a couple minutes and find some leaves or grass or things like that out in the yard that you can use to put on top of your sun paper. Any of those any of those are great ideas. Um, so here's how it works. You have a blue sheet of paper. You put these objects on your, your, on your sun paper, and then you take your sun paper out into the sun. Now, the thing that makes this paper blue is that it has been coated with a chemical compound. Um, and I don't know, like I, I'm not a chemist, so I don't know how to say the actual like compound name, but its common name 
is Berlin Green. And it is a water soluble chemical. So if you took your blue piece of paper and you put it in the water, then it would turn white because all that blue would wash away and you would be left with the white of the base paper. Okay, so it's a water soluble chemical compound that is coated on this paper. And when you walk out into the sun and the UV rays from the sun hit this compound, there is a chemical reaction that causes the compound to change to a water insoluble compound called Prussian blue, which funny enough um, is white or it's actually clear. <laughs> so what happens is your blue paper, everything that you see on here that's blue, when you're in the sun will turn white. And everything that you see that's white on here actually um, stays blue. And that's happening because the UV rays from the sun are hitting the chemical compound that's, that's loaded onto your paper and changing it into a colorless compound. So now all you see is the white base paper. But the items that are protecting the paper from the UV rays of the sun stay blue. So when you have sat out in the sun for about a minute, the instructions on this thing, I think say one minute. Oh, they say about two minutes. Um, if it's cloudy, you might wanna stay a little bit longer. If it's super sunny and you've got bright direct light, then you probably won't even have to stay out there for a minute. I took this out onto my backyard deck and it's pretty sunny today. Um, it didn't take a full minute. You could tell when the paper was completely white. So once you come back inside, after a minute or so, um, you can take your objects off and the background will be white and the items, the, sh the shape of the items that were protecting the paper will be blue. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your paper and you're gonna dip it in water. And I will have either some shallow baking pans or like cookie sheets or something that have sides on them so that we can put some water in there. And then you're gonna stick this paper, take, take it off the cardboard, and stick the paper into this shallow pan of water. And you're gonna do that for about a minute um, is what the instructions say. And you'll see that the water actually starts to turn blue because what has happened is now, I told you that the blue that was originally on the paper that turned clear, uh, turned into an, a water insoluble chemical, but the original blue that is taking the shape of these items that you covered up um, will now wash off because it's the original water soluble chemical com compound. So once that's in water, now the water washes all that away. This turns, there's a um, second chemical reaction that is happening and the water added to this chemical actually turns it blue and then the blue that was here originally washes off so now you're left with just the white from the paper so there's actually a series of two chemical reactions um, one is when the uv light hits the paper and then one is when the paper hits the water and when the paper hits the water there's actually two things that are going on the um, colorless has a reaction with the water that causes it to turn blue and the blue gets washed away because it's water soluble and now you're left with the white from the paper. So the paper turns from blue to white back to blue again and it starts off blue and stays blue under your items and then it turns white when you put it in the water. So once you pull this out of the water, I just laid it back on the cardboard to dry. It doesn't take, it doesn't take very long to dry. Um, and the cardboard kind of helps soak up the water too, so that makes it super easy. But some really fun things that I saw when I was kind of researching how to do this particular experiment. Um, this one guy did this really neat, um, like he was an artist and he did this really neat project or this really neat design where he took like layers of everyday items. Like he had a peacock feather and he did some other things that were layered on top of it, one another. And once he set it in the sun and brought it out and took all the things off, it looked like a lion head. Um, so maybe start having your kids in your class, encourage them to start paying attention to what things look like as a shadow and have them start thinking about some ways, especially the older kids, that they could layer some items on top of one another to make an item or a picture that is different from what the individual items that they use are. Um, so that's one really fun thing. 
Another really fun thing with the, um, especially with the younger kids is to ask them, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen when I get this in the sun? What do you think is going to happen when I get this in the water? And have them really begin to ask the questions of why did that happen? It's a great intro into chemistry. And so um, if you can get them to start asking those questions, why does that happen? What other chemicals would maybe react with the sun that cause a different um, reaction? You can talk about... um, What happens to our skin when we get into the sun, when we're exposed to UV light? Um, Another experiment that someone did was they took different um, sunscreens and just did a strip of each sunscreen and then put it in the sun to see how much of those UV rays were blocked by each one of those different sunscreens. So that would be a good thing to encourage your kiddos if they are interested to take it home and... um, you know, have their parents get some more sun paper. There are a couple of instructions online on how to make your own. Um, That's, that's a little out of my league. (laughs) I probably wouldn't do that. It'd be much easier for me just to order sun print paper and explain the process. But if you, if you get really geeked out about that, or maybe one of your kids is really interested in how that process works, making your own would be a great, a great thing to go deeper with them. Um, So anyway, that is science week seven in the un indescribable devotion book on page it's page 112 it's devotion number 53 it's called light it up and it talks about um, fireflies but it talks about the chemical reaction that happens that makes the firefly light up so that's kind of a little bit of a link Um, again it's just getting them to start thinking about making that connection to chemistry and how different compounds all have different chemicals that they are made up of. And when those chemicals interact, it can change, modify, or create something new. And so those conversations are the things that we really, really, really want them to be, um, begin to ask and to begin to understand and kind of think about. Um, Even the little bitty kids can understand that a a firefly needs something to make it glow. And so um, those are just great conversation starters and things to get them asking questions. That is cycle two, week seven.